Hello there, Coding Games here. Today I'm showing you how to get started on using Phaser 3. First of all, let's open new Chrome tab. Let's go to phaser.io, their main website. And after that opens, go to the download button. And after that, choose the JavaScript guide, getting started with Phaser 3, and download Phaser, download page. We will only choose the main.js file from this list. Now let's head to our desktop and create a folder for our game files. Okay, now let's drag our downloaded file into the folder we created on the desktop and let's rename it to phaser. whichever version of phaser we are currently using. Okay, let's open our code editor, I'm using Visual Studio, and let's open the folder we created on our desktop, which contains the phaser library. Let's create a new folder called libraries, or libs for short, to store our phaser.main.js file in it. Let's create an index.html file. We'll name it index.html and inside it let's initiate our HTML5 code. I'll just type HTML and there it goes. If this doesn't appear for you, just copy my code and let's remove the unnecessary elements. Let's rename the title to phaser setup. Okay, before we dive into our actual coding, let's create a new script. Uh, to import our phaser library. Let's set the source path to our libs. We use the dot that means our current directory and then slash libs slash. This name should be exactly the same. Mine is phaser dash three point five three point one dot min dot js. write something in my body to test things out. For example, I'll write hello world. In order to test our code, we need to download an extension called live server. Go to extension and search for it. I already have it. Download it in case you don't have it. And after it finishes downloading, just go to index.html, right click on it and click open uh, with live server. It's the first parameter and there it goes if you see hello world this means everything's working fine for you i just have to note that phaser library was loaded behind the scenes now let's write some actual phaser code i'll explain things as i'm writing first of all let's add a new script The window.unload is a function that will be invoked after all the elements have been loaded, such as the phaser library. After the loading is done, we want to write the code which will bring the phaser into life. First, we need to create the config file for our game, which will have some basic stuff. First of all, let's specify the type of the render of our game. There are this could be two parameters, WebGL or Canvas. WebGL is the default one. There's not too much difference between the two of them, but it's just that WebGL is newer, while Canvas works well with old devices. But we'll let Phaser take care of it by sending it to Auto. And then we head to the width and height of the game. I'll set the width to 800 and the height to 600. Adding the physics is optional, but since I'll be using some physics features later on, such as detecting collisions and adding speeds, I'll add physics into our game. Arcade is the most popular and beginner-friendly physics engine. There's also Matter and Ninja as well, but we won't use them. They're also a little bit more advanced. Let's add some uh, settings to our arcade phaser, which is going to be gravity, and I'll set it to 200. And that's it. We're ready now. 
Before we run our game in the browser, I like to keep things organized as we scale up, so let's add a bit of structure to it. Let's create a file which boots our game and call it boot.js, which we will be responsible for booting up uh, our game. I'll cover this up in more details in a bit. Let's just add a new script to import this file inside index.html. Small note, uh, every time we create a new file, we should import it inside our index.html like I'm doing now. Let me explain uh, to you what scenes are. So Phaser works with what's called scenes. Each game consists of multiple scenes. Each scene has specific roles. For example, boot is used as the entrance to our game. Later on, we will create a preloader, which will be the scene responsible for loading assets, and the main scene, which will contain our world where the gameplay will happen. And if you combine all those scenes, we make a game. So using scenes is good for making organized code and managing game state. Inside our game, we can also use a scene for the pause menu if we're gonna make one. If our game has multiple levels, it's a good practice to assign each level a scene. Let's initialize our game and pass our config object to it. To run our game, we need to specify the starting scene, which is, in our case, going to be the boot scene. So in Phaser, before we start a scene, we should add it first, like we're doing right now. We add the scene and then we start it. Now inside our boot scene, let's create the scene itself, which extends from phaser, or using phaser code. Let's add the method called create, and console log a message to see if things are working. Started boot scene. If you go to the browser, we see that we have a black screen, which means phaser is running, but there's nothing to render. There's an error. Don't worry, I think there's a type error in my code. See, it should be capital letter S. And this should be game instead of gain. Let's head back to our project and create a new folder called scenes and put all of our scenes into it. In our case, we only have the boot scene so far. And don't forget to update the path for it inside index.html. Let's create the preloader scene, which will be responsible for preloading assets and the main scene, which will contain our game's logic. Don't get confused that I'm creating a lot of scenes. You will know why I'm using separate scenes in a moment. And as usual, let's import those in our index.html. Remove the console message from boot and let's use this scene to add all of the other game scenes into our game. So each time we need to create a new scene, we go here and add it. We have two scenes so far, so let's add those. Let's create a method which adds all of our scenes into the game and call it. And below it, let's call the preloader scene once we add all of our game scenes. 
then head into the preloader file and add the initial setup for this scene. Before we continue, I'd like to talk a little bit about some important built-in phaser methods. Phaser has four main methods which we can see in here. And it is rarely used. Preloader is used to load game assets. Create is used to add assets and create game logic. And the update is used to program the logic that reacts to user actions, such as changing directions, adjusting speed values, or checking key clicks. I leave this for a moment so you could read it all by yourself. Let's get back to our preloader scene and let's add some code into it. Let's add some code into our preloader scene. We will use the preloader method to load images to our game. Create an assets folder to gather our game assets in one place. We will keep things simple, so let me fetch an image from the internet and load it inside here. It's better to use .png format when making phaser games as they take less size and can have transparent background which is something very useful when creating games. Let's move our downloaded image to assets folder. Then go to preload function and load that image. We must provide a key which we will use to load the background image and specify the destination that we need to load the image from. Rename the image to background and give it a key of background. After the preload method finishes loading our image, the create method will be invoked as we explained earlier, and we will use it to start our main scene. Some of you might say, why wouldn't I preload the images in the preload method of the main scene? The answer is that we might need to add some features later on for the preloader scene, such as a loading screen or any sort of things, so it's better if we keep the preloader as a separate scene. In this scene, we will add the background image that's been cached earlier, so we could finally stop seeing that annoying black screen. So let's add the create method and load this background. This tutorial's goal is to get you started. I will dive more into phaser mechanics in the upcoming tutorials, but I'll explain a little bit of what's going on in here. The first two parameters for the background image are the X and Y coordinates. The X and Y coordinates are equal to zero at the top left corner of the image. The X value will increase as we move to the right and the Y value will increase as we move to the bottom. The third parameter is a string, which is going to be the key that we predefined in our preloader scene. The final step I do is set the origin of the picture to zero, and you'll know why I did this in a bit. But now let's check out our results. Awesome, we now have a basic template with a great structure to use for our games. I'll explain a little bit how the set origin works. When you add an image into the scene, the origin of the image is set to 0.5 by default, which means the values that we specify for the images X and Y are going to be placed on the center of this image, and from there, we will start positioning our image in this scene. So if you were to do this in our case, half of the top and half of the left of our image will be hidden behind from the interface. And to fix this, we need to push it to the right and to the left by half the image's width and height. We just created a simple JavaScript Phaser 3 template for our future projects. I hope you guys like it. 
This is my first time uploading a video on YouTube, so I hope you liked it. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments below.